I'm going to talk about the performance machine, um, basically how you do this well. And uh, I'm going to start off with a couple of questions. And the rules are very simple. Uh, if you answer yes to a question, you raise a hand. If you answer no to a question, you don't raise a hand. Is that clear enough for everyone? Is that clear enough for... Yeah, and we're awake. Brilliant. It is. So, first question. Does your CFO know what objectives your marketing department is optimizing for? Does your CFO know exactly what objectives your marketing department is optimizing for? Oh, a couple of them do. Brilliant. Good, good for you. Um, qu second question. Do you have a mobile conversion rate equal to or bigger than your desktop conversion rate? Does your mobile experience convert at least as well as your desktop experience? Yeah, a couple of... Final question, do you work too little? Like, do you feel like life is a bit too easy, I work too little? Oh, no one? Okay, cool. Good news for you, we are moving into an automated world, and we all know this. Uh, we believe that 88% of all media buys will be automated in a couple of years from now, and as we move into an automated world, it's very important to set up your performance engine so that you get to the right place fast instead of to the wrong place fast because automation will, will bring the speed to this. So the, the, the sort of performance machine that I want to talk you through today uh, looks like this. It's basically four steps plus a, you know, underlying thing that we need to care about deeply. Uh, first, you need to set the direction of your engine. Uh, that is about setting objectives, and that is a combination of finance and marketing together. Then you need to put some fuel into the machine. That is the data, auditing and onboarding, instead of spreading it out in all different silos. Then you need to get the speed in there, activating everything. And finally, you need to steer that machinery using your steering wheel, which is automated dashboard and, and reporting. Uh, and underlying this, you eventually want to upgrade your engine, so you need to fix mobile, uh, because mobile is the world's most important customer channel, and it remains to be. All right, so uh, going a bit into, into depth here. So setting objectives, we talk about maturity. On the left, you have the least mature ways of setting objectives. On the right, you have the most mature ways of setting objectives. The least mature ways are budgets. If you work with budgets, you have, per definition, sub-optimized your performance machine, because there's no way you can predict how, how much you're going to need to spend there and there in a couple of months from now. No way. So budgets is bad. BB. Easy to remember. Bad budgets. All right. Um, but then you eventually get sort of cost per something, cost per click, cost per acquisition, cost per something. You move on. Percentage of sales, but still top line revenue, which is still a bit unhelpful because you want to get to profit. You want to be able to afford to succeed. You want to be able to afford to press the gas pedal on your performance machine instead of, like most companies in this room today, sitting with one foot on the gas pedal and one foot on the brake, pressing both at the same time because you're unsure, will this work, right? Because you're not optimizing on profit, are you? So, uh, and then eventually you get to lifetime value profit. And that's all about just, you know, creating different order values and saying this person is worth this much, this person is worth that much. It's not more rocket science than that. And we'll look more on that later. But it's so important that you set your objectives. Because when we come and ask companies, what do you optimize for? What's your objective? Then they run off like, oh, hold on a second. Uh, let me get my hat. Well, we optimize for 200% ROAS. There you go. And where did you get that number? It seems very even. Like, well, I, you know, there's the hat and here's the number. So. Uh, we need to be more sophisticated than that. The CFO, the business controllers, needs to calculate what it is that we should optimize for. Otherwise, it's not the truth. Otherwise, it's just fiction. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything, and you can be true or not to your objectives. So, as my T-shirt says, optimize for profit, not budgets. I printed it just for this. I brought it up this morning, and someone nice at the hotel ironed it for me. Thank you. Super, and yeah, it's just great. Anyways, so set the direction. Good objectives optimized for profit. And so which company do you want to own? One company with a 20 to 1 ROI, highest ROI, or a company with 5 to 1 ROI? Raise of hands, those that want to own 20 to 1 ROI company, the most, sort of, the highest ROI. Okay? Raise the hand if you want to own the company with 5 to 1 ROI. Yeah. There's so many smart people in this room, right? Because it depends, right? It depends, what, what can you get? So in this case, 20 to 1 ROI, you are able to invest $100,000, giving you $1.9 million in profit. 
In the case of 5 to 1 ROI, you are able to invest $10 million, giving you $40 million in profit. Who wants $1.9 million in your pocket versus who wants $40 million in your pocket? Unless you optimize for profit, you risk ending up with $1.9 million in your profit. And as Anna talked about in the beginning, we live in a global world with global competition, and many global companies are optimizing for profit. So how will you build long-term sustainable performance machines if you don't do the same thing, right? So important. Um, so, you know, we, we, we just need to fix that. It's point two, onboarding and audit, uh, auditing data. You need to have a very clear view of what data do you have onboarded to fuel your performance machine and what's the next thing you need to onboard and, and sort of get in there, right? Because that will enable you to understand what are different customers worth. Like in this case, where they figured out that 20% uh, of our customers bring 61% of our profit. It's very good to know which 20%, right? It's helpful because then you can invest in them first instead of last. Right? So it's so important. And it's just one, one practical example is, is cruises. Not the best industry at the moment, but still, uh, cruises, <laughs> you know, uh, a 5,000 euro cruise um, for a wedding couple might seem like a better idea than a 3,000 euro cruise. But the wedding couple only goes once, whilst the elderly people enjoying life goes 10 times. And then it's a different story, right? Whilst your system may think this is the better idea when it's not, right? So it's so important that we optimize what we, on what we want to achieve. All right. Um, yeah, so step three, activating everything. Um, so once you optimize for profit, you need to activate anything that delivers on that. We see so many Swedish companies who could sell profitably to 30 markets, who sell to five. Like, why? Why would you do that? You can sell profitably to 30 markets, one feed in English, 43% of all global searches in English, you know, boom, do it. Why not? So activate all mo profitable markets, not some profitable markets. Activate all profitable ad channels, not some. Activate all profitable ho products, not some part of the assortment that, again, the hat dictated which products, which markets, etc. So it's so important that we activate everything. Um, because what we see when we do the post-analysis of what could have been when you activate everything, we are unfortunately normally need to go back with something like this. Yeah, in 2019, you could have got gotten 55% more customers, but you didn't, did you? Because, you know, this thing. So it's so important that, that, that we activate everything. All right, and final step, automated reporting. Stop with the having everyone in the organization chase the right data points, provide automated reporting so that everyone has the right data points uh, top of mind all the time. And finally, fix mobile. And we have tried a lot of different things to help companies fix mobile. Uh, one key thing is speed, as you know, and uh, uh, it's critical that, that, that the site is fast. And if you fix speed as a one-off thing, the site becomes super fast until some brilliant campaign designer decides that it's a good idea to put a video on the landing page or something, I mean, whatever like that. And then it plummets again and, 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 and you know, all the one-off efforts were, was for nothing. So what we advocate is a mobile steering committee for every single company, where the CEO and the CMO are there. If they can't prioritize this in the world's most important customer channel, what do they prioritize, right? And in there, you also have the UX lead, you have the conversion rate optimization lead, you have the tech lead, uh, and, and you have a sort of speed gatekeeper who won't let one kilobyte into the mobile site unless they have a ticket to, 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 to come with. So fixing mobile is key. So this performance engine is not stronger than its weakest link. And you need to understand what your sort of performance is in each of these and what your maturity plan is to strengthen this engine, right? because it's not stronger than its weakest link. And ultimately, you decide if you want to build an engine fueling your business that is nascent or one that is multi-moment. And you decide which of these two that you want to be. So with that, optimize for profit, not budgets. Thank you.